Just woke up on Sunday, taking a couple days off work finally. Feels so good to be able to make him brew a pot of coffee. It's almost done. Oh, the hustle and the grind. Is that right, Jeepers? Shake up the creamer, makes the coffee frothy. You drink coffee? Alright, so I've got so much stuff going on. I just hired a project manager to help manage my internet business. But this, these videos, is part of that. And um, so now I have seven virtual assistants helping me, and we all work part time. Some of them just a few hours a week. And it's scary taking risks. But here's what happens. You get to a point where you know you can't run on the wheel faster or anymore yourself. And you keep getting exhausted and stopping and giving up. And you just can't get to the next level without help. But the problem is, do you have the money to hire that help? Well, if you run on the wheel by yourself long enough, when you play your cards right, you can make decent money running your ass off by yourself and they keep socking that money away into a little account, right? And then that becomes your risk account. That becomes the money that you play with to take a chance and roll the dice and hire somebody. You don't hire somebody if you can't afford to pay them. And now it puts even more pressure on you to have that person help you create more money. It's not just about money. I always, I am cleaning my teeth. Because I, I usually get fired up and motivated to make a video right after I eat. So that's why I'm cleaning my teeth in the videos. Isn't that funny? But it's not just about money, it's about passion. Because if you are forcing yourself to try to expand or grow or do more of something you hate, that's a horrible experience. And the life of an entrepreneur, sometimes if you see the, if you understand that you're, the long game that you're playing, Sometimes you have to do things that you don't like doing or dislike doing for years so you can eventually get to the point where you can do things that you love to do or that you want to do or your passion projects, right? But they all tangentially connect and there's many lessons in between. And one day you find yourself in a place you've always dreamed of becoming. And you know what? You worked every inch of the way to make it happen. Some things, sometimes stuff happens overnight for some people. But the question is, have they developed the skill sets necessary to be able to handle that success? Because to, to him, much is who much is given, much is required. Got to run up in the dollar store real quick in the dollar store. 
Okay, I'm done in the dollar store. That was crazy. I went in there vlogging. I used to do it all the time. And the lady was like, get out of here with that camera. Out of the store. You cannot be at the store. Without... And everybody looked because the lady was saying it in like a, uh, a very aggressive, almost violent. So I walked out of the store calmly. And then a customer walked out behind me and said to me, that lady was rude. And um, I just put the camera away and I calmly walked back in the store. Oh my God, is this Civic Audio? This store, Civic Music, Civic Audio here in Utica, Michigan, it's all bass and bumps and speakers and DVD players and sound surround systems. And I used to come in here when I was a teenager and blow my entire paychecks on bumps and bass. I was the neighborhood bass guy. I was the, I, I used to work at, I used to do it for a living when I was a teenager. I worked in places uh, installing systems and in the neighborhood I was the guy who you'd go to to install your system. It was my obsession and I blew all my money on it like an idiot. And it says they're open. They ain't open. Oh, I've been trying to go in there for like five years and they're always closed. up here publishing a blog post article for my service business website my landscaping business and check this out hello my neighbor I'm Keith Kelfis with Kelfis landscaping and tree trimming here in Sterling Heights Shelby Township Macomb Township um, right here in your neighborhood so the reason why the keywords so the algorithm YouTube algorithm can pick that up it's listening to everything that you're saying all right and now this article has uh, it, it's, it's written very based on user experience so this isn't just some crap this is you can really actually read it all it's keyword optimized there's backlinks and you have to build organic backlinks leading back to authority sites like Google my business Facebook Twitter Instagram WordPress Yelp you know I don't have time to get into all that here, but I, all I want to say is make sure that you have a website that has a great user experience and it's mobile optimized, linked back to Google My Business, right? And publish content regularly, at least once a month. And so we do landscaping and window cleaning. When you come to my website, you can pick what services you want. You want to embed your positive reviews in there, have calls to action above the fold, which means before the customer scrolls down, they have to have some type of call to action so they know what they're going to get, right? And it triggers curiosity. And then, so you can click that and call my business, all right? But here on the blog, this is for search engine optimization. And the search engine ranking page, Google SERPs, because they're bots, they're crawlers that are always crawling every day, whatever's going on. So when you're posting updated content regularly, uh, like I said, at least once a month, <clears throat> if you only have time to do this once, twice a year, that's better than your competition. You're going to start showing up on the first page of Google. And you also, if you do this and you have other people, other people, your customers, also leaving you positive reviews and saying good things and sharing things about your company, right? And, and you're tying all that back in. They have their own unique usernames and their own unique IP addresses. So it's not all you saying this. See, Google's uh, algorithm has had many updates like the Hummingbird algorithm update, the Panda and the Penguin and all these things change. So you can't hack the system. It has to be totally legit totally legit and you and it does take time to do but if you at least have some of this going on linking back and forth from your website to authority sites and you're publishing and your customers are saying good things about you and it's getting shared around and all linked back and forth from your website to your blog what's going to happen is you're going to eventually start to show up on the first page so you get people paying for ads a lot of ad spend so not only should you pay for ads if, if you want but you should also have an organic 
back-end backlinking strategy. So you pay for the ads on the front end, but then you build a customer, re a referral engine, uh, organically through word of mouth, but also on the internet, on the back end. So you're optimizing everything that you're doing. So your customer acquisition cost goes down, 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 down the longer you're in business. Don't rely solely on ads. So there you go. This is called the Google three pack. That's an ad up there. But see these top three? You wanna show up in the Google three pack, very important, okay? Those are all ads. So one more time so you understand, it's really interesting how you got all these people paying for ads and spending a lot, a lot of money. Some of these people are spending 50 grand a month. But then if you look organically, my business in my city is in the organic, organically in the Google three pack. So figure out how you can get in there. So you don't get forever stuck spending money on all this advertising because you have an organic back-end strategy. All right, I gotta get that oil change in my truck real quick. But first I gotta run and check the mail. I just hired my eighth virtual assistant. It's crazy, it's so easy to hire virtual assistants all over the world, but when it comes to hiring like real talent, not real talent, I mean they're real, but what I mean is like physical labor, W-2 employees, Totally different ball game. I come here to check the mail and Dominic's trying to get me into a new office. Look at this. Oh shit. Oh, 750 bucks a month. Oh, I need this office. You know why? Because I can't get anything done at home. You know why? Because my dogs won't quit barking. I love them, I love them, I love them, but they won't quit barking. I can't get anything done. I'm losing 17,000 a month by not having a nice quiet office. Oh, like this is nice. I'm at the Ford dealership getting my oil change in the truck, dog. Record. Gotta get the oil change in the truck. Is it funny when you know you gotta get the oil change so bad, but you're so swamped and you keep looking at it and you're like, what? I, I don't know what to do. What am I gonna do, take a day off work just to get your oil changed or send someone else to do it or leave a crew working and you go do it. I've been looking at the F-250s, man. This is the F-150, obviously. I might eventually have to upgrade to a 250. This is dope, dude. I love Ford trucks, don't you? Doubt. Look, this is my car guy, Phil Bryant. Behind oh. glass. <laughs> this is the Ford GT40. Look at this, it's dope. Oh my god. We should do a sequence of the GT40. The Oh my god, it's amazing. Look at this. Amazing. You know what's so crazy? I always thought the Ford Fusion was the dopest looking car ever. And the only thing that ever made it not look dope is that it's like the most popular car in America and so many people have one. So because of the law of familiarity. But if you actually just look at it for what it is, even though it's not rare at all, the design of it, in my opinion, is just incredibly dope, dude. It's like an Aston Martin. It's a beautiful car. I'm gonna look at these 250s, man. I gotta look. I'd get a white one for sure. What is this? A two, this is a 250 Super Duty. Is this a diesel? I don't know. This might be a diesel. Bro. Oh, this is nice. Oh, a cowfish like it. Dope, man. I got four in here if you need it. I got plenty. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, 
I gotta sit here and wait for my oil to get changed. I'm gonna get some work done on the phone. Follow up with some clients, missed calls. Hard to breathe in this mask, bro. Hey, I really wanna say thank you for subscribing to this channel, for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. And uh, thank you. One more thing. I'm having a good week. I feel great. But I have a lot of ups and downs, man. Sometimes I get really down and really depressed. Really overwhelmed and overworked. So I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. So, every year around the 4th of July weekend, I take a week off work. But I, I don't take it off work, I just shut down the business because I'm so fucking swamped. And spend that whole week working 12 hours a day catching up on everything else that doesn't get done while working. So. I gotta go to the landscape supply and now do all the landscaping at my house, which does not sound like fun to me, but my wife's all over my ass and wants it done. <sighs> I wish I had even more money so I could just literally hire one fucking personal assistant who hires all the contractors to do everything and I don't fucking deal with anything. Literally all I do is sign checks all day. That's all I wanna do. You look at people like that are 70 years old, you just spend your whole life just running constantly which is not a bad thing but it's just like here who happiness is when you're doing what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it how you see fit not doing a whole bunch of shit you don't want to do when you don't want to do it <laughs> We at the park now we're walking the dogs at the park yo oh, there he goes Oh, he's getting that poopoo. -poo. Beautiful, beautiful day, man. Happy. So, I was saying on Instagram earlier that you know, I'm getting ready to go to Minnesota to Stanley Genetics house, the dirt monkey. Make some dope videos. We're gonna meet up with Brian's lawn maintenance, Brian Fullerton and his wife. Wife trying to myself. We're gonna get together and mastermind. While I'm in Minnesota, I'm gonna try to make it over. Well, I'm gonna make it over to Chant's Daily Hustle. Hang out with him for a bit, make some videos. Every time there's another dog, Miko goes nuts and tries to attack it. So we have to keep him on a short lease and watch him like a hawk. This is Dodge Park in Sterling Heights, Michigan. It's a beautiful place and it's right down the street. But when you're so busy working, you could live in a beautiful place and rarely ever go there. Like when you go to California or Colorado or to the mountains or even Hawaii, you could be like, hey, you get to live here? You get to live by these mountains or this beach? How often do you come here? And then some people might say, I haven't been to the beach in three years. What do you mean? Well, I'm so busy working that I take it for granted and it's become normal. But you know, Michigan, to be fair, has eight months of horrible shitty weather. It's either freezing or raining or snowing or, and then, oh, there's only a few months where it's actually just beautiful. Look at that huge oak tree just dead. All right, I'm back home. We're gonna go get some landscape supplies. Oh, look who's here, my nephews. Hello. This is Benjamin and Sebastian and Xander. My wife's name is Ashley, so they call her Aunt TT. So they started calling me, my name is Uncle Keith, which in their brain sounds kind of like teeth. So they started calling me Uncle TT. And I look at him and I go, I am not Uncle TT. And then they start laughing so hard, it's so funny. And then they go, Uncle TT. I go, I am not Uncle TT. It sounds weird what I'm telling you, but it's actually funny. Hi, Benjamin. These kids are enlightened, man. Like, they're so smart. All right, we're gonna go get some landscape supplies. Bungee the top, stay the tappy. Bungee the tappy. Tappy. That's what it is. Bungee the tappy. 
Make sure you open these up. I can. It's about to load this cobblestone. Now we gotta get weighed again, man. How much do you think it's gonna weigh? 13,776 pounds is what I think it's gonna weigh. Okay, here it goes. 12,380 pounds. <gasps> 360, 380, 360. What were you before? I don't know, what? 6,800? Back in the BJ Herbert landscape supply again. I am looking at F-250s, but my dude at Ford dealership said, I can literally pull like 13,000 pounds if I just get a bigger motor and an F-150. Does that sound a little sketchy? I mean, he wouldn't tell me that if it was. See how that's a 250? All right, so that's the end of this vlog. That's a vlog, right? Untrap Podcast just hit 130,000 downloads on iTunes or whatever. I'll put a link in the description below, but for my podcast, you can listen to it while you work. My friend, thank you so much for watching my vlogs and videos. Please help me get to 100,000 subscribers. Smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what type of videos you want to see from me. My marketing ROI live event, we're thinking about pulling the trigger and launching the live event right now. And the COVID situation, uh, I don't know what I want to do. My new book is almost ready and out. I have a brand new course coming out called Landscaping Course Part 2. Plus a whole bunch of other stuff. I need to just make a list and talk about it for like an hour. All right, because I'm so busy running my landscape business. That, uh, all right, bye.